Hello everyone and welcome to another mini sky tonight. So with the 4th of July coming around the corner, I decided why not talk about the wonderful grandeur that happens this time of year, the beautiful fireworks display. Now I understand that for many cities across the nation that these beautiful displays of light and color are often canceled to prevent people from congregating because of COVID-19. And it's kind of sad because I know I look forward to it every year and to see the beautiful um, artistic work done by um, several choreographers as well as uh, masters of the art of creating fireworks. Now, sadly, because we have to stay safe, I decided, you know what, why not bring fireworks to you? Explain the colors that you see, what you're seeing, and how it's all done. Now, before we get into this, I'm going to give a public announcement. Do not try this at home. Do not try to destroy, dissect, play with, experiment with, or even modify a standard firework. Yes, you can probably get some fireworks from a fireworks stand and go do fun things with them, but don't. There have been recorded over 13,000 injuries per year across the world due to fireworks in some fashion. And I do not want you guys to become one of those poor souls that get injured. So stay safe. Only If you're a kid, only allow your parents to be able to launch the firework. Do it in a safe location and make sure you take extra precautions if you decide to use fireworks. All right, with that out of the way, let's get into some of the basics of fireworks. What, how did fireworks start and what is the anatomy of fireworks, how we get the beautiful colors and so on. So a little bit of a history. The first instance that has been recorded was in the sixth century during the Chinese Song Dynasty, where they had these explosive rocks that they would use for some of their um, beautiful displays during their festivities. And some of that knowledge and technology got passed around the world during the Chinese trade. It wasn't until like the 13th century when an English monk named Roger Bacon started to experiment with these explosive rocks and created the concoction we know today as gunpowder, which is a slow burning substance that is easy to control. With this kind of technology, in the 1540s, the Mongols then introduced this concept of using gunpowder in their form of a firework, and they introduced it into Europe. And in 1905, you had the gunpowder gunpowder plot by Guy Fawkes. So every no, uh, 5th of November, there's a big, huge fireworks display in honor for him. And then of course, in the 19th century, we decided to use fireworks for our 4th of July displays. So that's a bit of a history of how it went from uh, ancient China to here in the United States where we use it every 4th of July. So let's look at the guts and the dynamics of a firework. Basically, a firework is a glorified missile, but with different components, rather than going to be used for destruction, it's used for awe and wonder. So the basic idea of a firework is if, if you look over here towards the right, you have the bottom part, which is known as the stick or the tail. The stick or the tail is basically used as kind of like a base for the firework and also kind of gives the shape and as well as the stable position to allow the firework to go upward. And also, for, especially for uh, firework uh, manufacturers and everything, it gives them a means to be able to hold it into the ground as a steady port. The second part is the fuse. This is the area to where you light it on fire, and so that way you can start the spark and the ignition to go up. Now, the fuse can be just a simple cotton fuse, or it can be used an electronic fuse, and this is used in modern day terms. The second part is the charge. This is the point to where you basically get the initial thrust to go up into the sky. This is not the point to where it allows you to be able to see the beautiful color displays. This is the, this is get set up into the air, roughly around about 300, 400 feet in the air. The fourth part is what is known as the effect. As you can see over here, you get the beautiful colored balls in there that gives you the beautiful colors that you see as well as in the different arrangement, gives the different shapes. And of course, last but not least is head is the head. Usually it's roughly a cone shape or in a different type of shape to give it basically an aerodynamic point to go up into the air. Now let's take a look a little bit in terms of the charge. Many charges are either these cylinder parts and or they're what are known as aerial shells. 
It's basically this huge gigantic shell where you have a fuse, a case, and what are called stars. These are the color agents. So these can give you the beautiful color displays and as well as depending upon how they are arranged, they can give you the shape. And then also you have what are known as mortar fireworks, which basically uh, are these huge gigantic tubes that allow it to be shot up in a straight direction. Roman, a uh, basic example of this would be Roman candles. So here's what looks like on in the inside of a aerial shell. It's literally this big, huge, gigantic shell kind of made of timber wood or some other types of plaster. And on the inside, you have all these different charges of different chemicals and things of that nature to give it different colors. And I'll explain how they get those different colors in a minute. Now for uh, professional displays, what they use is called mortar tubes that don't have like all the charges and everything, but they interconnect all the different aerial shells as well as the mortars and put them in individual tubes and then mark them off and have different fuses. Now for professional displays, rather than having to go by each individual display and light them on fire and hope that they work, they use electronic fuses. So that way they can light it off at that instant and they can know exactly if a fuse did indeed go off. Now, before you think, oh, that's basic, that's easy, I can make some of my own. Now keep in mind, the professionals, they require lots of training, lots of education in order to be able to know what they do. As so if you look at the image on the left, here's a, a master firework person in the United States who's trying to show you the basics of how to assemble a firework. Notice he is, has a gas mask, he's covered in different types of soot. It's a very dirty job. Not only that, you have to be careful of the different chemicals that you're using. You are working with powdered chemicals, which some of those powdered chemicals can be nasty to humans. So they have to take a lot of precautions. Plus, keep in mind, these are explosives. Any registered heat or any type of spark can cause these things to ignite. So they have to do this very carefully and contain quarters. So I don't think you can just simply go out into your back shed and create a firework. It requires a, a lot of knowledge in chemistry as well as safe precautions. So don't try this at home. But if you wanna to talk to true masters of the art, look no further than to Japan, where they have been doing this for centuries. In fact, every year they host three competitions to get the glory and the honor of being the number one fire a firework manufacturer throughout the entire country. And if you become the number one firework manufacturer for that year, everybody wants to buy your fireworks. So this is like a life or death scenario for these artisans to do their art and craft very well. And they go all out. They put out the latest and greatest of techniques. They put out different colors. They trained and they do this as a fine art. They are the true masters of fireworks. And if you ever get to ch a chance to see some of these fireworks displayed, in fact, if you probably can Google um, or YouTube some of these, their fireworks displays, they are a sight to behold. So now let's look into the colors. As I mentioned, they use different types of chemicals. Well, these chemicals, once they produce with a flame, can create these beautiful colors. So your reds are your strontiums, your oranges are your calcium compounds, blues are your coppers, strontium and copper are your violet colors and so on. So all the different colors that you see in fireworks come from different chemicals that are being ignited. For example, for you kids that have those fun little sparklers that you love to play with and they have that bright white color, many of your silver and white colors are hot magnesium. So if you ever, uh, had parents that were really bad tricksters and they gave you those trick candles. The reason being why those trick candles work is because there's magnesium in the wick. So it keeps reigniting. Yeah, I, I got mad when my parents tried to do that too. Now for the shapes. As you saw back in the previous image, how the different shells are arranged, you can get different shapes depending upon the arrangement and how they're precisely put together. And each of those different shapes come with a precise name. 
So the ones that are like these beautiful displays and then they look like they fade away and make beautiful long trails, those are called willows. Palm trees obviously look like palm trees. And then of course you have the rings. Serpentine ones, what they look like is basically as they explode out, all of a sudden these little sparks just kind of shimmer and shake around. I sometimes call them fish and I've seen them professionally called fish, but you can call, but I, from what I've seen is they can either be called fish or serpentine, whichever you prefer. Another one is called pistols. Those are usually, from what I can see from my research, is the, the big, huge white ones that go pop and then they're gone for a few seconds, but they leave this huge explosion. And of course, the very famous roundels are the ones that just go straight up and leave these beautiful outward reached arms everywhere. So next year on the 4th of July, or if you're shooting up some fireworks and friends out there, you can impress them with your knowledge of the different shapes that you can see. So these are some of the basics of fireworks. I hope you all have a wonderful 4th of July. Stay safe, stay healthy, and as always, never stop learning.